Hey coaches, welcome back to Football Talk with Coach Chip. On today's episode, we're going to be looking at some of my favorite play action passes. All right, coaches, let's get started. We're just talking about a few of my, our, over the years, favorite play action passes since we went to the the, the gun wing T, for lack of a better term, the gap gun, whatever you want to call our offense. And this one you've seen if you watch several of uh of the videos here on football talk with coach chip but this is my favorite especially off the buck action as you can see you can also you want to offset this guy and put him here and fake power put him in the pistol fake power fake iso it's a great play action pass out of gun and it's kind of the our version of waggle so to speak. You can see the outside receiver. He's going to be your flat guy, really. Well, you're going to have two flat guys if you do it right. The widest receiver over here, number one, is going to run a five-yard, what we call an idle route. Okay, he's just going to run to the top of the tick mark, see here, and he's going to settle down and post up like he's posting up on the low block in basketball. Number two is going to run a corner, and we like running the corner from 10, thereabouts 10, to 22 imaginary point on the sideline we in, in practice we put a cone over there or, or a piece of you know a, a towel or something a landmark for him to work to that 22 mark and find that hole now on the back side what we do with the slot i mean excuse me the h the tight wing here is going to run kind of like an old school drag is that that is as deep as he wants to get. You can actually have him come across it the best way he can get across, but work to a level about five, six yards. And that's where you get the idea of having two flat receivers. Now you put them in a bind. Is somebody going to run and squat with number one? Or is somebody going to stay in here and guard the traditional, the, you know, the more orthodox uh, flat area? Okay. And then the backside receiver runs an over route, could run a post. Now, if you do this out of tight wing, you've got a four-man surface over here. What I would do is have the tight end run the drag to the flat. And that's where we're a little bit different. Like the old school wing T, we used to tell him to settle down in here, the dragger. Okay, but we'll have him come over here and try to get in that flat. Now, if he sees this guy's run way the heck over here, then he'll settle down right in here. But back to the tight end wing concept, let the tight end be your dragger and then let your wing run your over or your post down the middle of the field to keep the safety honest. All right, let's look at a video. I've got a few of these right here. Oh, the pass protection on this, I'm going to link up down in the description, the comments, a good video on how we block it like this right here, pulling the guard. Okay, you see that's number one. He's come over here and settled on the uh, settled at the top of the ticks. Probably need to get a little bit wider. And uh, this kid here was always trying to get extra yards. Sometimes it wasn't necessarily a good thing. He got a lot of shots he didn't need to get. But also, what I want him to do is catch it and get up the field. Remember, if you're running play action, it's usually a pa uh, running down, and so you're you're fine with five yards. And that's why you want to make him, tell him he's got to settle at five, not three. So if he's tackled immediately, you've got a good result. Say it's first and ten, now you've got second and six, second and five, second and four, which is what you want. Just turn up and get all you can get. Or right, here it is again going the other way. It's a great picture here. You get to see number one the whole time. Let's look at it in the slow-mo. Excuse me, my stuffiness. It's that time of year. Now you're going to get your play fake right here, faking the buck, and get involved in the pass pro running back. Now watch right here. Number one is going to come right over here and settle at the top of the tick marks. Those are those sideline marks, what we call them, tick marks. Boom, 
post up. See, post up just like a low post in basketball, which works out for this kid. This kid wound up playing college basketball. Boom. Protection, this kind of protection can break down. That's one of the negatives to it. But that's, it's a play action. Quarterback, get to your fake, your fake. Get to your spot. Boom, right there. Right here, the corner maybe a tad bit too deep. Well, not really, because there's 10. And there's 22 right about there. Now, watch the uh, the drag gets the H, what we call him. He's going to get back here and work for depth. I don't want that. We don't want that. What we want, and we've evolved it over time for him to come across. Really, it's hard to tell because of the depth of it, the depth perception. But release best you can. Make it look like you're blocking down and then work across right about in here. That's about where we want to get right there. Okay, and you're going to see the backside. Now this one, we've got him flexed. He's not split out all the way. And he's going to come right here and he can run it over or he can run an old school post. It's, it's up to you. It could be a play action. I mean, it could be a game time situation. It could be a game planning type of thing. But you can see he made a guy miss a tackle and turned a five-yard gain, you know, into a, a big play, about 15 yards, 12, 15 yards. All right, now here is my second favorite off the buck, and I really love this one. And this is one we don't do all the time. This is a tag. You're going to see number one over here miss the, miss the tag. And we're on this sideline of this game. And so he was all the way the heck over here. And this is one of the detriments of not huddling. You you run into that, missing the missing the call or miss, getting the call and then not staying to see the tag. And we've actually toyed with the idea of doing the tag first so the kid doesn't look away. So what we're going to do, we've been running, and when we ran this, the one you're about to see, it was second round of the playoffs. So it's game 11, excuse me, game 12. We've been running this pass concept right here with him going to the corner all year, two, three times a game. And so this team had, what, 20-plus clips of us running this. And so – and they were running – they were running this defense. They were four across right here, and it was pattern matching or some type of soft man. And the safety was right here. And so he starts backpedaling with his hips turned here, thinking he's going to break to the corner. So he's saying, I'm going to undercut this and get a pick. What we called – what we call cop – Corner post. And so we give the cop tag, boom, fake to the corner, and then go to the post. This guy here is supposed to get the, get the call and either just run it deep, run that corner off, and again, that's a game plan thing. What are they doing on defense? Or run some type of dig or something like that. But do not run a post or an over route taking somebody to the party you don't want there. Everybody else is doing the same thing. The H over here, the wing, is running his – Drag, and he's running his idle route. All right, watch this kid right here. Fake the corner, boom. And there you see the backside guy. And after the touchdown, you can see before it clipped. Oh, no, I clipped it off too quick. He looked over like, what the heck? He missed the call. But he had enough about him to realize don't go for the ball and break up the play. See, again, the wing, the H on the backside is working to too much depth. I don't, I don't want him ever going over eight. But, look, he keeps working for depth. He's got to flatten that out. But this is a great concept, a great tag. And, again, if you want to see how we protect it, I'll have it linked at the bottom in the description in the comments. All right, here's another one. That this is, And it can be run. It doesn't have to be buck if you're not a buck team. It can be run off a of power fake, off the uh, what Kenny Simpson and his gun T concept calls the uh, calls the belly, which is what I call like a gut ISO. You know, the play action in the backfield really isn't irrelevant, it needs, but it needs to be what you run a lot. You know, go back and you self scout. What do you run on first and ten a lot? And this is a great time to run play action. So if you're a big buck team or a big jet team or a big power team or you know, gut ISO slash belly team, 
and that is a predominant play, like 50% of the time you're running your best run play, let's say, on first and 10, then this is also, this is a good change up. We really like to try to be 50-50. And what I mean by 50-50 on first and 10, we want to be 50% pass, pass 50% run. And, and remember now, that's the only neutral down in football that you can count on. And so we really want to do that and try to be as close to 50-50 as we can. I don't know that we've ever been a true 50-50, but that's in my mind. And that's in our play caller's mind. And so we'll wind up maybe 60-40 sometimes. And that's fine because now that defensive coordinator has to call a defense accordingly and you're getting a nice defense to do what you want to do it against because he's having to play at 50-50. But most DCs I know, if you got a 60-40 uh, percentage on any down, they're going to have to play it like 50-50. They're going to have to darn sure play it like 50-50. Anytime you're 60-40, 40-60, anything in between there, they're going to have to play it honest. And that's what you want. Okay, this is kind of like this is the high-low cross, the, uh, the Y-shallow, uh, what the air raid guys call it. So what we're going to do, this guy here is going to run the post. This guy here is going to run the, the dig, the drive, whatever it is you call it. And this guy is going to run the shallow. This was, a, this was early in the year. This was a senior tight end that had been a tackle. We had a young tackle that, that really put on some weight and got big, and we, played, we wanted to play him. And so we converted this guy to a tight end. And he looks like a good high school tight end in his build, but he really wasn't that kind of player. And he's early in the year, and so he's kind of fighting to get off, and you can see that he's not really dipping and ripping and getting off, but he's going to work too deep. He wants to get shallow right here this guy here is going to run him off right here and try to get that safety's attention or at least get that corner where he can't break on the ball and help out if we do throw the post but you can see they're really crowding the line we ran the ball a lot that year we had tight end types that year you know those of y'all watched a lot of our videos know that we don't run a lot of tight end because we don't have those kind of kids you see that's a lineman in him look at him he's hitting everything watch the tight end boom Boom. <laughs> That's early in the year. But we do catch that safety napping. See, he didn't really bite on the play action, but where are his eyes? Watch his eyes. And you can see why this is one of my favorite play actions. But watch the safety's eyes. There again, they're in some kind of soft man or or a pattern matching where he's over the number two and he's going to mirror him, but his eyes, they're in the backfield. And you're, you're going to win that battle. Look at his head. Meanwhile, number two out there, the slot's running his route. Again, you can see the that, that's a fortuitous roll on a bad snap. <clears throat> All right, here's another. This is our version of sale. Now, the way we do this is a little different. We don't square it off. You can see it's rounded for a reason. We tell him to start sinking his hips and rounding off at 10, getting no deeper than 15, almost like running a speed out. Again, notice the backside's doing the same thing they did on the first one. So all we're doing is changing the front side routes. He's running the drag. And he's running the post or the over route right here. We say, what's an over, coach? An over is where you, you break it off a little bit quicker, in my way of thinking. You break it off a little sooner, and you're working to that magic 22-yard point on the opposite side of the field. Okay, on our practice field, I used to paint that 22 and because so many of our routes use that 22 as a landmark. And it's just a good thing you can refer back to the kid. Like in a game, you can say, hey, dude, work your 22. And because you've repped it so much, you know – he knows what you're talking about. So you got to have catchphrases like that. That when you say it in, in the course, in the heat of action, that the kid can respond to it and go like, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, the old saying, fall back on your training. Break to 22. So he's working that imaginary point, point on over route. We've got a clear out here. On the video, you're going to see where the this receiver, who was actually a safety by trade, is going to break it off right here. That's not a good thing. He got it deep enough before he broke it off. 
this needs to be a clear out. He just needs to go. Okay, now he could get the ball if he just burns the corner, but he needs to go and clear that area right there out. You know, that's all pass passing is, is throwing the grass. This sounds a little bit like an air raid guy, and I'm not really an air raid guy, but I've learned a lot from the air raid. And he's going to run that speed, deep speed out, deep speed out. He said, why do you do that? Because if they're taught well, the DBs, when they see those hips sinking and you're going to make a sharp cut, they know that. So if you're not really sinking your hips a lot and you're rounding it off, working to where you want to be, then he doesn't see it and break off his drop as quickly. Now, we didn't pull on that one on the protection. That was our slide protection. All right, look on the back side. You're going to get this. Right here, you're going to get that deep speed out. And you want to get this, clear his butt out. You're going to see he breaks it down right in here. And again, now if you're watching this on a Saturday or a Sunday level of competition, you're going with well, the quarterback never looked anybody off. Guys, we're talking high school football. Okay, that's don't overcomplicate it. He's got everything he needs to know is right in here. Now, what do I mean by that? If this guy gets his route and he's open, then you throw it to him. Period. End of discussion. Meanwhile, you've peeked at this guy. Did he get behind him? No, which is why this guy broke it off. Because, look, that guy's deeper than him. But he just needs to keep going. It's not a read route. And if the corner, or the excuse me, if the flat defender has matched up and run with this guy, that's why that backside guy coming across, he's going to be open. Look, it's about what the line of scrimmage is right about in here. Ball's caught about 12 or 13 down the field. Remember I said don't get deeper than 15. And this guy's going to be buck naked wide open as the day he was born. That's why he doesn't have to look off this guy right here. Now, unless you've tagged it and tell him look for that backside post, he doesn't have to look backside. It's a fallacy that a kid can see the whole field. Some of y'all longtime subscribers have heard me say that. I, I doubt very seriously that even the Peyton Mannings of the world ever saw the whole field. What are we talking about? Somebody's got the kind of peripheral vision that they can see 160 feet from left to right? No. No, but what they do know, that you say when they, when they say they're seeing the whole field, what they're saying is they know if this guy breaks here, then this is going to be open. They ain't got to look at it. That's why you're going to see the quarterback's eyes looking right here the whole time. He's going to make his fake, drop back, and he's looking here the whole time. Because he doesn't need to see the whole field. He just needs to see what area he's throwing to because they can't take away everything. And, of course, he's an athlete after the play and makes a, good, makes a touchdown. All right, coaches, that's it for this episode of Football Talk with Coach Chip. Thanks again for your time. Hey, don't forget, hit that like button and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Don't cost nothing. And look at, speaking of don't cost nothing, look what else don't cost a cockeyed thing. All these things on the right, free from football talk with Coach Chip. All you got to do to get it is be a subscriber. If you're already a subscriber and you see something here you like, Send me a message saying, hey, coach, I'm sharing your channel. Send me this, please. And boom, as quick as I can attach it to an email, it's on its way to your email. That's football talk with Coach Chip. Also, don't forget, we have our publications. Got the Big Book of Bucks. Been a real popular seller over the last year plus. Got the, uh, the playbook, which is a good resource for starting out. And also the offensive line manual, which is still flying off the proverbial shelf. I say shelf because it's not a hard copy. No trees were harmed in the making of these publications, these resources to help you out. 
They are $30 a piece. Get all three for $60. But that offensive line manual, if you're a gap down backer offense, you got to have it. Just contact me at Siegel.chip at gmail.com, and I will get that right to you post haste. That's it for this version of Football Talk with Coach Chip. Until next time, hey, y'all, be elite.